Okay, my friends, I'm hoping somebody from this Aurora Borealis Observatory or someone will take an interest in what I've been looking at and understanding. They're showing here the strongest corona ever recorded. All right, the corona is the, the violent impact of the rays of the sun hitting space. And that's why the corona, way out here, away from the sun, is millions and millions of degrees. On the surface, only 6,000 degrees. It's because all the particles shooting out smash into the outer atmosphere, creating a heat zone. Exactly like the Earth. We shoot out particles, well, the particles actually come into the Earth, smash into the Earth, and create a zone around the Earth of, of heat and ionization, which is electrons. All right, here's the ionosphere. It varies from minus 99 degrees to 440 degrees Fahrenheit, depending upon what is impacting it. And if you look at the science overview, they talk over here about uh, where is it? Sources of fundamental features of the ionosphere. The ionosphere is formed primarily when the most energetic compo components of the solar spectrum shooting at us, x-rays, extreme ultraviolet, anything that's highly energetic, impact the illuminated side of the Earth. That's why it's so high, high temperature. It's being concussed, combusted. These high energy photons strike the daytime side of the Earth, ionizing the upper atmosphere and losing energy in the process. They are feeding electrons into our atmosphere. That's how they're losing their energy. As the beam penetrates the atmosphere, the ionizing beam becomes weaker and weaker, leaving behind a layer of electrons, which is ionization. Part of the energy goes into heat as well as into ionizing the air. Yes, and it doesn't escape because we are scrubbing through these other particles. They're not letting them go away. Now back to the uh, Aurora Borealis people. Um, that's the strong solar corona. Now, is the sun putting out more energy, or are they seeing it from here? Because we're looking through more energy, it's creating more energy as it impacts. I think that's the case, that they're not really looking outside of our atmosphere to see that corona. Because here's what I'm finding, and it's, it's not good. It's not good at all. This is the first ever electron tornado that they discovered, swirling mass of electron tornado, first time observed above Earth. And here it is. It's because our Earth is spinning through a dense now, dense, dense, dense soup of electrons. That pushes our electrons this way. And when it does, it lights them up. That's the push to shove. It's called push to shove creates glow. We are spinning through, well, we're spinning really this way. and. Our atmosphere is scrubbing the atmosphere that sits up here. So it's forcing electrons down into our atmosphere, creating a tornado. That sucker sat there for hours. Listen to this. The, the, um, scientists said last week that was a previously unknown phenomenon. It never happened before because we never had so many electrons. Electrons, upper atmosphere raining electrons instead of water. And it was a tornado. And they said it lasted for hours. I can't remember. It's down here somewhere. You could see flows of plasma going around, which were like winds of a space hurricane. It's because our Earth is spinning against them, and they're creating exactly identical to a generator, forcing electrons into us. And that makes them go around our poles. But now there's just so many, as they circle the poles again, they're doing this, and they're forcing the poles out and scrubbing harder and harder. It's, gonna, it's, it's really getting pushed to shove way too much. Too much interaction. Okay, this is John Glenn, 1962, going into space and coming up and seeing the darkness of space. And then in front of him and trailing behind him are all these brilliantly little star-like objects. Those are hydrogen atom cores, and they are being bombarded and, and absorbing the particles of light coming in, brilliantly lit up, so they get, they get hot. It gets up to 440 degrees Fahrenheit in the range he's in. And additionally, he won't be able to hear ground control because he's in amongst 
a zillion electrons exploding all over the place. And he sees him, he's, he's freaked out. I don't blame him, watch. <laughs> Now don't forget he's going to say he's just coming up into the sunrise. All right, you see him how just they're almost just like laying there. He says they're hardly moving and they're seven or eight feet apart. He was very specific. He said they're about a sixteenth of an inch, what he can see of the lighted part. And they stay apart because they are doing this. The particle itself is in the center. Okay, these are the particles. But they control big regions. So there's one over here, there's one over here, there's one over here, there's one over here, eight inches apart or eight feet apart or whatever he's saying. Now out in space, I've been watching the Russians doing their plasma experiments in zero gravity like this is. There's no gravity here. So they can push away as much as they want. And then they feel comfortable at this distance. And they're still being impacted by space though. And these glowers are the ones absorbing the radiation is coming in. He says they're ahead of them, they're below them, they're swirling. That whole range of ionosphere is just waiting to accept the particles coming in. And it stops anything that is in that 5G range because when they hit, they explode and glow and push each other eight feet apart. And that's what's going to happen to the particles on Earth. It's going to be a nightmare. So then I went on to say that I study these very deeply and the particles are saturating in space. They're saturated. New atomic research, which I've been doing, which is the electron flood theory, shows that we are literally blowing up. And this is what space really consists of. This is saturated with electrons everywhere. It's, they're spitting out from everywhere. So, and from every other luminous source in the body. Primarily where towards us is where the push to sh shove is. That is forcing electrons down into our layer. Because these electrons are still pushing down against us, not as hard as with the sun's rays, but they're still pushing down. We're scrubbing against them. They're not, we can push them out a little bit, but it's nothing like what's, they're pushing harder in than we can push them out. Now, what's happening down on Earth? We're putting 5G down here. 5G does what? It is, it, 5G is millimeter wave wavelength frequency, and that splits water. And what happens when water splits? 1,700 times bigger it becomes. That means our... Case closed. All right, listen. He's, he's spinning along with the earth against these particles. They're going with him, apparently. He must be going with the earth. Uh, he's not going against the earth. He's going with the earth with these three or four miles an hour difference of speed, basically. And, and they are just laying all around him. Now, here's the key. Here is the key right now. You see this brilliant layer? And you see the Earth, I don't know whether the Earth is way down here or is right here, I'm not sure. But this is the layer of atmosphere. Let's just take this whole layer. Well, what is it? This is the part that's really reacting because that's the scrub. And these are pushing against it. So it's push to scrub, push to shove. And the more we blow this up, the more scrub. You can see these are pushing each other eight feet apart when they're down on the face of the earth where there's not supposed to have these radiations down here. Millimeter weight of ra radiation is blocked, 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 blocked. It says the atmosphere says do not come down here. That's when visible light, no problem. Radio frequencies, no problem. A little bit of infrared, no problem. A little bit of ultraviolet, no problem. Gamma, no. X-ray, no. 
millimeter wavelengths? Absolutely not. You're going to blow up water molecules just like you do in your microwave oven. And that's why they have to have them eight feet apart. And just think of what's going to happen to, to the insects and the bacteria and all the things that have no, no depth of skin and so forth. They're reacting right on the face of their, their bodies to 5G, which is a water breaker. It's a water destroyer. I don't think this has been looked at very well. This is not going to end up well, I don't think. Okay, this is, makes it as clear as you can be clear. Penetrates Earth's atmosphere, yes, in the radio waves. Just a taste into the microwave, and then absolutely not. Microwaves, infrared, a eh, little taste of the infrared. Visible, yes. I said ultraviolet a little bit. Appears, no, not at all. And from here, from visible up, no, absolutely stay out of here. That's going to hurt people. This will break water molecules. Don't come in here. Interact with those big white ones that John Glenn was seeing and stay up there. Instead, we're putting them down here and forcing it to break the water molecules. Our Earth's atmosphere is going to expand exponentially, and it cannot take it.